there and welcome back to Elements for Bloggers. I'm Jenny Elliott and in this video you'll learn how to create a watermark brush for yourself in Photoshop Elements and how to select, resize, and apply that brush to your photos so you have a nice watermark effect and your photos are better protected. Let's get started. Now before we begin I wanted to take a few moments to talk about why we would use a brush. A brush is basically like a stamp like a rubber stamp that we're going to use on our photos. There are a number of reasons why this is a better option than just typing out your name every single time. First of all, it's a shortcut. Second of all, you can have anything stylized just the way you want it and you don't have to recreate it every single time. And thirdly, there's a reason to use this over using a super, super shortcut like Actions, which some of you may be familiar with which is depending on whether you have a horizontal or a vertical oriented picture, you might want to have your watermark be in a different spot on the photo. Also, you might not want it to be right over somebody's nose, for example. So there are a number of reasons why you might want to use a brush. I'm going to take you through the steps on how to do this. So let's get going. All right, here I am in the editor and I'm going to leave this document for right now. This is a photo of um, obviously ice crystals. But the first step we're going to do is create the watermark brush. So I'm going to go up to File and New, and it's going to be a blank file. And here are all the options I have. I'm going to call this Jenny Watermark, give it a nice descriptive title. And let's make this a, let's say, 2,500 or 2,000 pixels wide by about 300 pixels tall. And then the resolution is fine at 72 pixels per inch because that is what I'm outputting my photos at for my blog. So 72 there is fine. If you want to have a high resolution one, feel free to do that. Um, you can have it at you know 150 or 300, whatever you'd like. But obviously the higher resolution it is, the more it's going to slow things down for you in the process. So, um, and then the background contents, this is the most critical here. You want them not to be white. I believe that's going to be your default when you first open it up. You want it to be transparent. And that's because you don't want any white around the outside of your brush. You want it to be see-through. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And here, this is the shape of the brush I'm going to be creating. Once again, this is kind of like a rubber stamp that has the, your copyright notice written across it. So it's time to get going. The first thing I'm going to do, which we saw in the last lesson, is to select my type tool, which is just the big letter T here. And I'm going to pick a typeface that's going to look good on my photos. I'm going to go ahead and for mine, have a premium font that I really like. It's called Carolina Pro Black. And I'm going to go ahead and make it in black here. And I'm going to make it much larger than what I have, maybe 500 size. And there we go, that'll do fine. So now I'm going to just write my copyright notice. Copyright 2013, Jenny Elliott. And I will click on the name of the layer over here. Now, because I had the text centered, it did not you know, it spaced it out all crazy. It's okay, I can still get that back. I'll just go over here to the Move tool and I will click on that and then I can drag this over into position. Now, I think that for what I wanna do here, I'm gonna go ahead and make this fill up the entire space. You want this as big as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this with my Type tool selected and that'll highlight the whole thing and I'm going to bump up the font size when I have it at 500 before, I might go 650. Ooh, that's way too big. Oh, and you know what? It actually registered that at 110, not at 500 last time. I'm not sure why, but I'm gonna go ahead and actually have to bump this down a lot. 200, 170. Okay, so for me, 170 looks about right. And I'm going to click select here. See how much bigger I can get this by going to the type tool. And I'm gonna see how much bigger I can get this without having the letters bleed over the edge of this brush. So I'm just gonna 
put my cursor here in this font size um, selector area and I'm just going to bump up the size with my cursor until it fills up pretty much the whole space but it's, we also don't want it too tall like I said and I'm going to commit that by clicking on the title and move this over just a bit up oh, and it's a little bit too big just slightly so I'll have to fix that one more time there we go now we are all inside the bounds of my box so I'm gonna get that centered within this it really I'm a type A personality so I care about these things but I don't think it really matters if you have it perfectly centered here don't tell anybody once I have the type laid out like I want it I can go into the brushes and you can do that either by pushing B or clicking on that brush and this will bring up your other options up here now this little drop down has all the brushes that come with elements that are already in it and this is the default brushes go ahead and make sure that you select default brushes and then we're going to go up to the top we're going to go to edit and define a brush and you want to give this a very descriptive name it's going to put whatever name you had in the name of your document here so Jenny Watermike I might put 2013 so it's super descriptive and then I will hit OK so that has made it into a new brush if I click up here at my brushes you'll see that that's the one that I have right here um, it's saying 1979 because it's 1979 pixels wide um, and you can't get a good preview of it but this is the one that it is and I'm going to actually make this a little bit bigger the last step in this process is to save this brush you can see if I hover over it this is the name of it but the next time I open up Photoshop elements it will not be saved automatically you have to save this so highlight that brush and we're going to go over to the little expander arrows here and we're going to go to save brushes at the very bottom and this is going to save the entire set which is why we selected um, the default brushes to begin with but I'm going to call this watermark brushes dot ABR is the file extension and I, I have a folder on my computer for brushes but if I want to see what this looks like you know I can save it to my desktop anywhere just make sure you know where you're putting this thing because it can get away from you and then go ahead and click save and now this brush is saved so I'm going to go ahead and close out of here not saving on the whole document because I now have it saved as a brush and now I want to apply this to my new photo so I'm gonna go ahead and click on my photo you'll see it's giving me right now this little no don't do that symbol and that's because I don't have any layers selected so I'm gonna select the layer that I want it on and actually I would not do this to the base layer I would do this to um, a brand new layer so I'm gonna go ahead and click my little sticky note to make a new layer on top and then with B for brushes I'm gonna go here and select which brush I want to use and I'm gonna select that brand new watermark brush I just did and then down here you can select what color you want remember your foreground color is the one that's going to come out so I'm going to make this in white here and hit OK and now you'll see I have a cute little ghost of a brush outline that's right here so if you just want to see what it looks like you can stamp you literally just click one time and there it is stamped on your photo now that looks tacky so we're gonna do that again I'm gonna go ahead and command Z to back up a step and I'm gonna resize this brush right now is at 1979 pixels let's pull it down to I don't know 1200 pixels for this whoops and you can see what it looks like here um, it actually gives you a preview when you resize it so there is my copyright notice copyright 2013 Jenny Elliott maybe a little bit smaller to a thousand there we go that's nice and tight let's see let's do 950 because I'm going to squeeze in this little space here and I'll go ahead and click 
to have my watermark here. Now that once again, still tacky because it ha it's just really, really dark white and that it does not leave a good watermark impression. This is why we put it on its own layer. Now all I have to do is with my, that layer selected, drop the opacity down and I can do it down really to whatever level you want it where it's not distracting from the content of the photo, but you also want it to be obvious to people who are looking for it. And obvious enough that people who might want to steal your photo see it there. And that's it. Our photo is now watermarked. So imagine how much time this whole process saves you. If you have a brush, then you could just stamp this on and just drop the opacity on many, many pictures very, very quickly. And another option that you have would be to have different variations of your watermark. So for example, I might have one here that's copyright 2013 Jenny Elliott. I might have another one with perhaps a company name. Um, and if I have all of those saved here in my brushes palette, then all I would have to do is select which one, stamp it and go. So super easy. And at the end of this video, I'm going to go ahead and include instructions down below. So you don't have to watch every single step if you don't want to, but of course, feel free to play back this video as many times as you need because it's free. In this video, we've learned how to create a watermark brush and we've learned how to apply it to a photo. Your job for today, you guessed it, is to create a watermark brush for yourself and apply it. And if you do this for your own photos on your own blog, I would love to see it. So please drop a link down below in the comments so I can go over and check it out and congratulate you for your great work. It's been a pleasure walking through this tutorial with you today. And if you are getting a lot out of this series, I would ask you to follow the link below and share the home page of this series with as many people as you'd like. My goal is to give as many bloggers as possible the tools that they need to make their blog rock Pinterest. I'm Jenny Elliott. Hope you have a great one. See you next time.